Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Okay. What what are we doing? Uh uh Forces News video, guys. Hope you're doing well. Hello, my name's Connor. If you're new, preemptive like the link to the original video, top of the description as always. Uh Discord below that. Would love to have you. Makes it easier for me to see your recommendations, get to know you. Let's go. Fire! Wasn't very enthusiastic, sorry. Jesus Christ. Fire! Never really notice just how fast those things are going until they're like close to the ground where you can see perspective. On behalf of NATO, British forces are playing the enemy on Russia's doorstep. What we bring to the fight is mass and size. We're staying very, very sneaky. That's the sort of stuff we're into. This is what it's like to go up against an alliance battle group in Latvia. Eyes on. A test of how hard the UK can hit when it punches through enemy lines. Ow. Part of NATO's enhanced forward presence, Canada leads a multinational defense posture in Latvia, one of several countries with bolstered defenses on the eastern flank of the alliance. That means regular drills like exercise Titan shield to test itself. But for the first time, a British unit, normally based in Poland, has made the stretch over to play the Red Force in Kampadazi. Um, so, Kaliningrad, the stretch over. Russia received this territory after World War II, correct? Or at that time, the Soviet Union, right? And, and then they just kept it after the fall. Wait, so how did they keep it? Shoot. Um, yeah. Okay. To play the Red Force in Kampadazi. Outnumbered, they need to prove they can make this journey and win a fight. NATO's Blue Force need to defend the territory. Both need to box clever. Across these Latvian forests, reconnaissance troops from the Battle Group Alliance and British Armed Forces are scattered around, remaining unseen, sometimes for days at a time. Their job is to call in coordinates of enemy targets for their side to take out. Some have already made it behind NATO lines. Cool, so we are currently uh, located on uh, XCOM. Uh, troops up in the north. Uh, in the last 48 hours, they've been conducting um, recce's on possible bridges as first and second advance forward, uh, causing a bit of disruption in the middle. Fourth uh, troops have managed to um, make their way down uh, in behind enemy lines. Italian guns, Spanish, and the Polish, I believe, they are located in these sort of areas. Right up close, but they don't know they're there. So causing as much chaos. And as much disruption as possible, yes. We went to meet the Royal Lancer, causing all the trouble. Don't want to give your position away too much. We'll stay right. essentially quiet, low as possible, stay infiltrating, identify targets for... Guys, uh, big question. What? The, I'm not saying you shouldn't prepare, but any sort of f battle or fight, war between NATO and Russia, I mean, it's never going to be a full conquering, right? Because at, at that point, before you capture a capital, I'm sure nuclear weapons are going to be heavily threatened, if not used. Um... A lot of people, I, I feel like, think like no country would ever use a nuclear weapon because that's that is suicide for that country. But if you re you don't think that a, some people, I guess, don't think that a country would ever use it, even if like Washington D.C. was threatened, you don't think America would would use nuclear bombs, or if Moscow was threatened. And so the sort of war scenarios between NATO and Russia, all I can see it as being small skirmishes and then backing up, because all-out war, to the point of fully defeating your enemy, will inevitably result in nuclear weapons, will it not? So, 
it, it just seems like when people are doing NATO exercises uh, to defend against Russia, it's like you're preparing for a scenario that just doesn't make sense in my head. Uh, artillery and then push through on foot and uh, give them hell. The stuff that feeds the battle group um, soldiers at the front there make sure that they can do their job. We want to cut that off as the enemy. We want to make sure that they're having the hardest time receiving their orders. Russians, all the things that they need to survive and stay in the fight, we wanted to cut them off from. While the remainder of the squadron stayed up in the north, we were in the south identifying artillery, all the sort of rear echelon areas, and sort of calling fires onto that, staying very, very sneaky, and causing a little bit of trouble for the, for the battle group, which is our job. A little bit uh, unorthodox, a little bit non-standard, that's the sort of, sort of stuff we're into. And can you give me a bit more detail on what's coming next? I wish I could. The coordinates allow the Susanna guns of the Slovakian artillery... That means it's like classified or even he doesn't know. ...UK allies in this mission to target the enemy... Sorry. ...Susanna guns of the Slovak... The coordinates allow the Susanna guns of the Slovakian artillery, UK allies in this mission, to target the enemy. Ooh. Like heavy metal hide and seek, they move out of cover to fire positions. Then fall back to the tree line so they can't be spotted. I don't think I've seen artillery on on a vehicle and certainly not a wheeled vehicle. What? By NATO's recon drones. I'm pausing, sorry. With its own guns, Spain is representing NATO, waiting for the call to destroy the Susannas and watching its own back the whole time. We have people with infantry units more close to the enemy. We can provide the first support. The problem is that we could have units in our back, so we have to cover all the sectors. We know where they are more, more or less, but we don't know all the movements that they did. The British have other ways to hone in on their targets. So it explains to me what we've just seen. It felt like they were firing at us there. They pulled up and just suppressed in a general direction down the road uh, to see if they can draw up the enemy's fire. So they're essentially waiting to see if they get anything back. And if they do, they know where everyone is. Yeah, so basically it's a risky move. NATO's blue force is being sized up from left, right and above. When it comes to calling in close air support and other offensive air operations, it all relies on a JTAC. That's a Joint Terminal okay, Attack yeah, Controller. Yeah. Here's a British one calling in coordinates for the red side. One, six, three, five, one, two. Request you uh, scan a uh, kilometre box centred on that grid. Polish T-72s will be operating in that area. similar process to the Susanna guns. However, the intricacies with aircraft is we're trying to get the aircraft to, to physically get their eyes on the target that we're discussing. If it's guys from the reconnaissance troop and they're feeding that information to me, it's got to travel either by voice or data to me and the commander. We've got to make that assessment. I've then got to produce um, a CAS brief to send to the aircraft. We then have a conversation, me and the ground commander, whether we're going to strike that target or not. The big thing we're trying to test is not firing the guns for small targets. It's always crazy. Because once the guns fire, they're then picked up on the Canadian battle group's radar. We found the Canadian defensive position on the western side. There we engaged and destroyed two of their armoured vehicles as well as some of their dismounts. Time for enemy UK forces to put their attack plan into operation. We are a small, collective, cohesive unit. Many of us have known each other for years. These are reconnaissance soldiers that you see behind me and they've learnt the ground very quickly. We're vastly outnumbered, vastly outgunned. Any opportunities that we've been able to get, we've exploited. The only way that you're going to be able to... They are digging their defensive positions. So the covering force is very similar to what we do as a core role in terms of reconnaissance. And so the first thing that we had to do was get into the, the recce fight. Uh, we won that, but tonight the squadron will go out and find the enemy uh, and then start 
to try and have an effect to shape the battle, uh, the battle picture. Moving to position, the attackers get to choose where the fight. I feel weird because I'm not like talking that much. Maybe that's good, but I, I just I, I don't have I don't know. I'm just trying to learn. Happens. Here. Moving to position, the attackers get to choose where the fight happens, but not how. The vehicle left. Oh. The hell is that? That's so cool, seeing bullets exit out of something that's like not a barrel. There, there's obviously a barrel that's in the tank, you can't see it, but just seeing fire come out of uh, just a hole in the tank, it's, it's, not, it's really cool. Not if you're the enemy, I'm sure. But for me, sitting here. Forced into the open. They're using blanks, right? They have to be, right? That was such a dumb question, obviously. They're cut off. And kicked back. There's two of them. The Royal Lancer's motto is, uh, is death or glory, and I'm afraid up against the tank, they went with death with a bit of glory thrown in. The response from all the different nations was pretty much the same. There was a really good common ground, a really good common... Actually, guys, the yeomanry, I've heard this before, I forget what it is. Anyone explain that? ...was pretty much the same. There was a really good common ground, a really good common standard. I don't think the world has ever seen this level of cooperation before. Blinking British hazard lights to signal a NATO victory. Tom Sables forces news, Latvia. Really cool. Thanks for watching. It felt a little weird because I, I didn't, I wasn't talking much, but I don't think I did. But uh, I, I, there's just a lot of stuff I, I just trying to observe there. Um, I'd appreciate, uh, anyways, any answers, any of the questions I had, any comments in general. Love to see it. And a uh, quick little video. Uh, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.